Hey everybody, Matt with Jameson's Tractor here. Today, we've got a unique opportunity to compare a couple tractors. One of them I have for sale, a 2022 John Deere 4044M with the loader, and this one actually has the backhoe on it, which we're gonna kind of pretend that it doesn't. Um, and this tractor right here, which is my neighbor's, I think it's a 2018 or 2019 Kubota L4701. And uh, he's kind enough to let me use it from time to time, and he's let me borrow it for this video. And something I want to go ahead and point out is that there's a new version of this out. It's the L4802, but it's very, very similar, um, mostly cosmetic updates. Um, it did move to, um, I think it has just a skosh more horsepower, like one more horsepower or something like that. But once again, very, very similar machines, uh, just you know, LED lighting on the new one. So for the purposes of what we're gonna talk about, I think that it's okay to compare these two machines um, because really, I think what we're gonna find is that they are similar, but really kind of maybe set up for different purposes. Uh, both will really do the same job. One's just gonna excel in one area and one might excel in the other. So let's dive into it and uh, get started. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of the specs, and I really don't want to spend much time here because the more I, the more I deal with tractors and deal with people and deal with people's situations, the more I realize that the nitty gritty of the specs are not that important all the time. And sometimes they really are, and there's going to be a couple specs that we'll see here that are going to sway these tractors and in, in actually, you know, show up into real world differences. Um, and then there's gonna be some other kind of specs that, that you know, really, I don't think they make that big of a difference. But we'll talk about a couple. Uh, the first thing let's talk about is, is the weight of these two machines. Now I grabbed the specs on the 4802 um, and it comes in without anything on it, just the tractor is about 3,500 pounds. The 4044M is like 3,750. Um, so you've got a couple hundred more pounds on the John Deere than you do on the Kubota, but pretty similar. Um, loader capacity, this one is kind of one where you might feel a, a, a difference. Um, this Kubota and the, and the 4802 is rated to pick up, uh, I think it's 1,650 pounds right in that ballpark um, at the pins, at the pivot pins to full height. This machine over here is rated to pick up 2,300 pounds uh, at the pivot pins to full loader lift height. And so that's gonna be a, a kind of a key difference there um, in terms of actual what it will pick up and move around. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, real world capability of that here in just a minute. The other thing, the next spec I wanna talk about is PTO horsepower. Um, gross, the L4701, L4802 is making 47 or 48 horsepower. That translates to 38 or 39 horsepower on the PTO. Gross, the 4044M is making 43 horsepower, which translates to be like 32 and a half at the PTO. So pretty big advantage to the Kubota um, in terms of power you know, back to the PTO. And then let's, let's take a minute and talk about the MSRP uh, and maybe a couple comparable models. Uh, um, disclaimer, MSRP is really not a great way to compare pricing of machines. Um, I'm using it just to give you kind of an idea, but I really wouldn't put much... Uh, faith into this and the reason I say that is because at any given time the manufacturers are running different kinds of promotions on the machines uh, money off low rate financing um, sometimes they're running really significant promotions for example um, Kubota as as of you know a couple months ago they were running the biggest discounts on the BX series that I have ever seen in you know the years that I sold Kubotas. Why? Well, because they had too many of them. All across the nation, they had produced more, 
and um, the market for them just wasn't buying the right amount. So with every quarter that, you know, the sales didn't produce the way that they hoped that they would, guess what? Promotions got better. So, and then even further on that, on the dealer level, if you have a dealer that has maybe too much inventory of a 4044 uh, or too much inventory of a 4802, you might find a dealer that's willing to, to get more bare bones with the cost and with the pricing. Um, so once again, MSRP is just kind of a, a general tool, but really I, I wouldn't put much faith into that because it's very, very possible that while MSRP on this John Deere is more, you could find it in the right circumstances, comparably priced to a Kubota L4802. It's also possible that it, it's not, but at the time that you're deciding to buy, that's really where you're gonna need to dig in and go, okay, what's around me? What are the promotions that are currently running, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the used market, which is where I am, uh, you're just gonna, you know, depending on the hour usage and, and the location and, and the year, you might be able to find models that are very comparable in price. Um, and so, once again, MSRP, I know that was a rabbit trail. Just disclaimer, new, the John Deere with industrial tires and just the loader is like 44.8. New, the Kubota with uh, industrial tires and just the loader is like 40,800. So there's about a $4,000 difference in MSRP, not necessarily sale price, MSRP. So theoretically, you could save some money on the Kubota. Um, or you could get a different Kubota, like a more close comparison of MSRP. Um, once again, MSRP, I think the MX5400 is, is really close in comparison, uh, MSRP wise. Um, but not necessarily in features. So let's kind of go into some more real world stuff and, and, this is where I think it starts to get more um, substance to the conversation here. We're not just talking about, you know, numbers on a sheet of paper. What do these tractors feel like? What can they do? Um, the John Deere, if you, if you were here and you could just sit on both these machines right now, you would instantly feel that the John Deere is more deluxe. It just is. Uh, the Kubota is set up to be more of an economy model. And it feels like an economy model. And I don't say that in a, in a, with a negative connotation, um, but it just, the way that you sit, the, the way that the controls feel, um, when you get on the machine, it just feels like more of a bare bones tractor. When you get on the 4044, there's plastic shrouding around uh, the center console. Um, the way things come up kind of around you feels more deluxe. Uh, and the controls, the way that it operates, it's smoother. It's got um, an electronic HST and some other things. So generally speaking, um, when, you, when you get into that machine and you get on there, you're gonna notice that, hey, this is more of a premium machine. And really because of that, it, it probably compares more closely to a Kubota, L, L4060 LE is probably its closest real world compare, com, uh, competitor, which I, I don't have one here. It'd be great if I did, but we'll still be able to kind of dive in and figure out who these tractors are going to be best for. Um, the other thing you're going to notice is that the 4044M is physically larger than the 4701 or 4802. It's a little taller. Um, you sit up higher. The rear tires are just a skosh bigger. Um, it, it's, it's just a larger machine. And it's a little bit heavier. So you'll feel that difference as well. Um, feature wise, going kind of back to, you know, some of the differences, um, you've got the John Deere twin touch pedals on the 4044M versus the treadle pedal on the Kubota. Both work. Uh, if I had to give a, a preference, I do like the side-by-side -side pedals better. Um, when you get into Kubota's Grandel series, they have the aluminum pedal that's shorter and you can operate it kind of like a side-by-side -side pedal. And that's, that's really great too. 
I probably wouldn't make a buying decision over the pedal. Um, it's just, we're talking about preferences. If I had to choose one, like I said, I do like the side-by-side -side a little bit better. Um, a couple kind of key differences here. On the Kubota, with the LA765 or the new loader, the 766, it is removable. Um, this 400E loader on the John Deere is, well, technically it's removable, but it would take a long time to do so. And it is bolted to the frame. You'd have to unbolt it. There's hard lines going up to the controls. Um, it can be removed. It just is not quick attach by any means. And really, I don't, I don't ever see a customer uh, or an owner removing that unless they're very mechanically inclined. So if you like to remove your loader or you need to remove your loader, you're either going to have to get um, one of the upgraded John Deere loaders. I think it's the 420R loader, uh, which I believe it is removable. Or you'd have to get, uh, or the, you know, you have to look at the Kubota or another brand. Um, the Kubota on the rear, on the industrial tires, has uh, configurable rims. And on the John Deere with industrial tires, it is a a welded fixed rim and with the Kubota you can reposition the width of how far out the tires sit so if you have slopes uh, or if you had a you know a narrow door or something narrow you needed to get through you can set that tractor up for your particular situation with this John Deere if you were to buy the ag tires on this the R1s the, the rims on the rear are configurable, just like the Kubota. They unbolt the same way. But in the R4, it is a fixed thing. Um, you have to buy wheel spacers if you need to move them out. I think that's kind of a detractor, um, especially if you have a lot of slopes and you're planning to be you know, side, side hilling a lot. Um, wheel spacers work, but I, I think being able to configure the rims differently is a better option. Uh, let's see, the loaders, Kubota's going to use the skid steer quick attach system. John Deere's got their own quick attach system. You know, there's attachments available for both at this point. A lot of companies are making attachments that will fit both styles of machine. And I think there's pros and cons to both. Um, with the skid steer style, I have seen it plenty of times where people don't get the, the pin that fits down into the slot seated well and the bucket comes off or the grapple comes off uh, mid usage and it tweaks, can tweak the loader I've seen or, or the, uh, the mounting plate. I've seen that happen a bunch of times, uh, unfortunately. With the John Deere system, I guess you could forget to pin it in. Um, but if you get, you know, if you put the pins in on both sides, it, it's in. Um, I, I don't know that, I'm, I'm sure it's happened. So I, I don't know that it's safe, you know, fair to say that that's an advantage. I will say that the, the John Deere system is very, very simple. There's no moving parts um, where you've got springs and some moving parts in the skid steer system. The other thing I've seen is over time, over a lot of time, if you don't keep it lubricated really well, it gets very, very stiff and can be, or, if it's freezing cold outside, that stuff can kind of get frozen. And I've been, you know, on a skid steer before that had a manual system trying to get hooked up to a snow blade or to a bucket to clear some snow and, you know, had to really, really work at it to just get, get the thing attached. So both work. Um, you can get attachments for both. I don't know that in this day and age that that's a real... I don't know that you need to make a buying decision based on that. Um, the only way I would say that you need to make a buying decision based on that is if you had a friend or a neighbor who you planned on sharing attachments with. You know, if your neighbor has pallet forks uh, or a grapple and you plan on using it, well, that may impact your decision on what you're going to get. Um, and I do think that you can get a skid steer style quick attach plate that fits the John Deere system, not from John Deere, but an aftermarket system that connects to the system that it's got and then now you can hook up the skid steer stuff i don't think that's a great option but it is possible if you if you needed to do that um you know the 
kind of going back to the operation, the automotive style parking brake on the deer is really nice as opposed to the latch system where you have to depress the brake pedals, latch something into place and then let your foot off the brakes. Uh, it's just easier to use. People are familiar with it with their cars. I think it's also easier to know that you've got it. I've seen where you think you've got the latch latched, you let it go and then it pops off and the tractor rolls a little bit. Um, I, if I had to if I had to choose, I like the parking brake, uh, the automotive style parking brake on the deer a little bit better. Once again, don't think you're going to make a buying decision over that. Um, the way that the hood opens, the the Kubota, the hood pretty much opens all the way up. There are some small, you know, uh, vented side panels on there, but the majority of the hood and the sides open all the way up on the deer. It's just the top that opens and there's a, a nut and a little clip on the side panels that you kind of have to, you have to remove the nut and then pull the clip and um, they come off. I don't know that that really has any significant difference. Uh, for most people, they're doing maintenance once a year. On this, you can, on the deer, you can check your oil uh, and check your air filter and your coolant level and you jump your battery if you need to all without having to remove the side panels. So maybe when you're doing your actual maintenance on the unit, you know, to fill your oil back up, you'd have to remove the side panels on, on one side once a year. Uh, I don't know that that makes a big difference, um, but that would give the edge to Kubota there. Um, you know, when you talk about operation of these machines, this is kind of where we're really getting down to, okay, well, what are we going to do with these? What, what are these machines best for? And I think that they're both uh, going to have strengths um, in certain areas. The, well, one thing I forgot to mention, the John Deere is a little bit louder. Um, when you get on the Kubota, it's quieter. Uh, I like that better. Um, the Deere's not like crazy loud, but it's, it is louder. And when you get next to buildings and things, it's kind of you know, louder than you really want it to be. Um, I think when we took, when we take a look at the features or the specs, when we're going back to the Kubota has more PTO horsepower, the John Deere has more lifting capacity on the front and more weight to the tractor. It's also a little bit larger machine. Um, I, I think that these two machines in particular are going to be better suited in two different areas. If you need a bush hogging tractor, I think you pick the Kubota um, because you're getting more more horsepower, and you're you're going to need that most likely. I mean, if you're running a six foot bush hog, you get into thick stuff. Having you know the six five or six extra horsepower that this machine has, it's going to make a difference. Um, Additionally, getting on some of the slopes with the configurable rims, the fact that the machine's a little bit lower, uh, and the fact that the loader is removable, I think the Kubota is a better bush hogging tractor. Um, maybe not hands down, but if, if I'm buying a tractor to bush hog property in this particular size, that's what I'm probably gonna buy. That's what I'm looking at. If I want, and this is set up for this, if I want a loader tractor, if I want something that can do some grading, lifting, uh, put a backhoe on the back and have it be a little bit more of a utility machine to do different kinds of jobs around the property, um, the Kubota can do those things, but I think that the deer is going to do those a little bit better. Um, and then it comes down to what do you like? Um, if you like more performance uh, or, you know, just bare bones and uh, horsepower, Kubota is a great machine. If you like some of the nice features and when you get on the tractor, it feels deluxe, this deer is going to be, uh, is going to feel more like that to you. You would have to go to a Grandel Kubota to get the same kind of experience. Um, you know, obviously there's other brands, there's Coyote, there's Mahindra, New Holland. I mean, everybody's going to have something in this category, but something I think that is interesting about this, that, uh, <laughs> when you're figuring out like Kubota has three or four models that really kind of compare to this deer and deer really just has two. Um, you've got the 4802, you've got a Grandel 4060, you've got the Grandel 4760, which is a little bit more horsepower, but it's, 
a fully deluxe machine and you can get the LA1055 loader on that, which you would have to go to that to get the equal lift capacity to this machine. Um, and then you've got the MX5400, which is a bigger machine, but you know because it's an economy machine, maybe a little bit closer in price to something like this deer. With deer, you've got the 4044M and you have the 4044R, which is the more deluxe version of this. And so when you're looking at different machines, and that's just Kubota and deer, you know, you think about Coyote, you've got the DK series, you've got the NS series, you've got the NX series, um, and you're going, well, how do I make sense of all of it? Really, most, most manufacturers are gonna have an economy version and a deluxe version. It just so happens that Deer's version, their, their economy version is pretty deluxe. Um, some of the features on it, uh, like it's got a, a, a space for a, a, a tie down point, like a chain tie down point on the front. That's the only tractor that I've seen that has something like that. Um, so there's a few niceties uh, that the deer is going to have some things that are well thought through. It has floating three-point arms. If you configure the, the three-point hitch, they can float individually. I've not seen that on another manufacturer in this class. Um, I don't know that that means that it's worth spending extra money on it, but that might be important to you. Uh, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, both of these tractors are going to be well suited in the same range. You could buy either of these machines and, and within the scope of their size and their class, you can get your work done. Either way you go. Um, I've said this before, what you really need to do, like for example, this deer, yes, it can pick up 22, I think 2300 pounds with the loader. Are you gonna wanna move that around, like my, my property is hilly right here. I'm not wanting to move 2,300 pounds around with this tractor on my property. I, I would want a 5075E or a Kubota M7060 if I'm having to move that kind of weight on a regular basis. Would it be nice to be able to move that from time to time? Yes. Does that translate maybe into some more breakout force, some more digging power if you need it? Yes. So there's some advantages there, but I wouldn't I wouldn't classify this as this, you know, beast of a loader that this Kubota is not going to be able to touch. I think for the most part, you're going to get similar performance uh, between those two. And and same goes with the PTO horsepower. Yes, you get more PTO horsepower here. Does that mean that this tractor is going to physically be able to do jobs that this tractor cannot do? Maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, big bush hog or super steep hill or just the th absolute thickest material that this would just stall and you would have to go super slow with the Kubota, but it would still do it. it. It would be something kind of like that extreme that we're talking about here, which is why I really want to get away from some of the specs and just talk about real world comparisons. Um, I think that, you know, once again, I'll, if, I'm, if, I, if I've got both of these dealers close to me, um, if I want a bush hog tractor and maybe I just want to save a, a, a little bit of money and am okay with it being more economy, I think 4802, 4701, that's a great choice. If I like the deluxe thing, if I'm maybe going to be focused more on loader work and uh, moving some hay around a little bit, needing a backhoe, um, those kinds of things, I think I'd give the deer a really strong look. Um, and you know, past that, you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to do the same jobs with these machines. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, you know, as long as you're kind of staying within the same class of tractor, you're gonna get relatively similar performance. It's just what features are important to you, what's the tractor need to to kind of be an expert in, and that's the winning combination. If you can get something that's right. I think 80% of the time is what I like to say. If you're buying the right machine 80% of the time, then you, you can feel good that you're making a confident decision um, and, and making a good decision. If you're buying a machine, you know, because the loader can lift something heavy, but it's too big of a machine for most of the things you're going to do, I think that's where you're going to start to kind of 
maybe run into some buyer's remorse or, or need to trade it back in. And, th and that's the mistake that people sometimes make is they think, well, I just need to get the bigger machine because if I run across that rock or that log that's just big enough, this one will be able to do it. Well, that's a very small uh, percent occurrence and usually you can find a different way to solve that problem. And so what you end up doing if you, if you buy that tractor so that it can do that one obscure job is you end up running something that's not right most of the time so that maybe it can do this one thing. And I just don't think that that's a great way to do it. I think you're looking for the machine that is right most of the time. And then if you have an obscure job that it, it can't do, you find a different solution for that. You rent something, you borrow something. If it's a log, you cut it smaller. You know, Whatever the solution is, you can come up with the solution at that point. But you'll be happy that you got the right size machine most of the time. Anyways, I'm rambling and I think that's kind of the end of my thoughts. Um, as always, if we can help you, if we can help you just decide what might be a good fit for you, even if it's not this size tractor, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Um, you can get us at matt at jamisonstractor.com. That's my email address. The number is 615-200-0703, or you can find us online at jamisonstractor.com. Thanks and have a blessed day. Mm-hmm.